This Week at NASA. Three, two, one. Lift off. Lift off of the Soyuz TMA-22. At 10.14 a.m. Monday, Kazakhstan time, a Soyuz TMA-22 spacecraft launched to the International Space Station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, carrying NASA astronaut Dan Burbank and cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Anton Shakopterov. The three are scheduled to hook up with fellow Expedition 29 crew members Mike Fossum, Sergei Volkov, and Satoshi Furukawa aboard the International Space Station on November 16th. Meanwhile, Fossum, Volkov, and Furukawa are scheduled to depart the orbiting laboratory on November 21st and land that night on the steppe of Kazakhstan. I'm also looking forward to going home in two weeks. I've been up here for uh, five months. Fossum, of commander of Expedition 29, had a rapt audience of students at the Department of Education in Washington to celebrate International Education Week. Participating in the in-flight call to the International Space Station were Deputy Secretary of Education Tony Miller and NASA Associate Administrator for Education and former astronaut Leland Melvin. Do you feel more energetic in space as compared to working on Earth? Okay, Aaron, that's an interesting question. I, I, I'm not sure I could tell anymore. I've been up here so long, I'm completely adapted. I'm now a, a, uh, you know, I'm now a space being, I think. In another event, students of several Alabama school districts got together in Birmingham to speak with Fossum about his experiences on the station. Here, I am very proud to say that MSL has been assembled, tested, encapsulated, and stacked on top of the Atlas and is ready to go. The Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity rover appears ready for its upcoming mission to the Red Planet. It sits atop the Atlas V rocket at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 41. MSL is scheduled to begin its nine-month journey to Mars on November 25th, where it'll use its 10 science instruments to search for evidence about whether Mars has had environments favorable for microbial life. The car-sized Curiosity is scheduled to land inside the planet's Gale Crater next August. NASA plans to add an unmanned flight test of the Orion spacecraft in early 2014. This Exploration Flight Test, or EFT-1, will fly two orbits to a high apogee with a high-energy re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. The Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle will make a water landing and be recovered using operations planned for future human exploration missions. The test mission will be launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, in support of NASA's new space launch system to take astronauts farther into space than ever before, create U.S. jobs, and provide the cornerstone for America's future human spaceflight efforts. Meanwhile, Orion's capabilities for water landings continue to be tested at the Langley Research Center. This was the latest in a series of so-called drop tests of a 22,000-pound Orion test article at the center's new $1.7 million Hydro Impact Basin facility. Three more Orion drop tests are scheduled through year's end. One, two, three. Another key component of the Space Launch System was put through its paces at the Stennis Space Center. The J-2X rocket engine, which will help carry the Orion spacecraft and its crew, cargo, equipment, and science experiments beyond Earth orbit, was successfully test-fired for 500 seconds. It may have been relatively close, but fortunately there was no cigar for asteroid 2005 YU-55 as it passed by Earth. These images were captured by NASA's Deep Space Network Array at Goldstone, California, as the space rock made its approach to our planet about 202,000 miles at its closest. Cornell University professor Mason Peck has been named as NASA's new chief technologist, effective in January. Peck will serve as the agency's principal advisor and advocate on matters concerning technology policy and programs. He succeeds Bobby Braun, who has returned to academia. 
Former NASA astronaut and space shuttle pilot Robert Crippen helped NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center start safe and stay safe during the 2011 Safety and Wellness Day activities October 26th at the center. Crippen spoke to team members about safety in the workplace and about his experiences piloting STS-1, the very first shuttle flight, and commanding three subsequent shuttle missions. They came to Hampton, Virginia from as far away as Wisconsin, Maine, and Florida on their own dime with their smartphones and cameras in hand to see behind the scenes at NASA's Langley Research Center. First stop, the hangar with its 11 aircraft of many shapes, sizes, and missions. In the group were some of NASA's biggest fans, Twitter followers. This was NASA Langley's first tweet up, an informal gathering of people who use the social media Twitter. You all have done an awesome job, and it's just been just wonderful. The day-long adventure included not only a look at Langley research facilities, but also lunch with an astronaut, two-time shuttle veteran Susan Kilrain. Working in space, after all, that is why, we did, why we're there. Plus, there were autographs to take home and lots of photo ops to capture for themselves and share with the outside world through Twitter and the web. Some of the next generation of scientists and engineers recently attended a special event at NASA Ames Research Center. The tour was specifically for a group of attendees of the 2011 National Conference of the Society for Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science, or SACNAS. The field trip was an opportunity to visit some of the key facilities at NASA Ames, such as the Pleiades supercomputer and the Hyperwall, as well as an opportunity to talk with researchers and ask questions about their work. We want to cultivate our next generation of scientists and engineers here at NASA. We want to ensure our future. And in order to do that, we need to educate the next generation and more importantly, motivate them to become scientists and engineers. Today, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is NASA's major center for robotic exploration of the solar system. But 75 years ago, this was just a brush-covered wash below the towering San Gabriel Mountains. In one of its Sandy Arroyos on October 31, 1936, a group of Caltech students and rocket enthusiasts nicknamed the Suicide Squad performed their first stand-up rocket engine test. This was the birth of JPL. On the 75th anniversary of that historic event, JPLers were treated to private employee screenings of the documentary, The American Rocketeer. The American Rocketeer tells the story of the lab's first full-time director, Frank Molina, one of the visionaries that led JPL in its reach for the stars. The American Rocketeer is part of a documentary series about JPL called The Beginnings of the Space Age, that premiered on public television station KCET in Los Angeles in November. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.